Welcome to the August issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery. We have four outstanding papers to discuss, and each is now available for the next month to read for free. The first paper, our editor's choice for the month, is entitled Statin Use Improves Limb Salvage After Intervention for Peripheral Arterial Disease, and it's written by Parmer and co-authors from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Statin use is recommended in all current practice guidelines for patients with PAD, but its effect on limb salvage after intervention is unclear. 488 PAD patients underwent surgical procedures, 297 open surgery, or endovascular procedures, 191 of them, and interventions between 2009 and 2010 at their institution. 41% received statins, 56% received antiplatelet therapy, and 26% received oral anticoagulants, often for another coexisting problem. At up to 88 months follow-up, 9% required a major ampu amputation, and 11% died. Statin users, as shown in this table, were more often male, white, and smokers and had higher comorbidities such as coronary artery disease, hypertension, and diabetes. Antiplatelet use, as associated in this figure and seen here, was not associated with limb salvage but did improve survival. Dual antiplatelet therapy use did not show any benefit over monotherapy for either limb salvage or survival but statin use was associated with both improved limb salvage and survival as shown in this figure when it was adjusted for severity of disease, traditional risk factors, and concurrent antiplatelet therapy. The authors concluded that despite existing guidelines, statin use is often low in the PAD population and efforts should be made to increase its use. The next paper, Technical Aspects and 30-Day Outcomes of the Prospective Early Feasibility Study of the Gore Excluder Thoracobdominal Branched Endoprosthesis, or TAMBI, by Oderich and co-authors, is a multi-center early feasibility pathway study, the first ever performed by the U.S. FDA. Thirteen patients with pararenal or extent 4 thoracobdominal aortic aneurysms were prospectively enrolled at five U.S. and one non-U.S. site from 2014 to 2016. The TAMBI includes four portals with either retrograde or antegrade renal portal configuration, as seen in this figure, and uses a gore via bond balloon expandable endoprosthesis for stenting of the renal and mesenteric arteries. The patients in this short and small study had a mean aneurysm diameter of 61 millimeters and a total of 52 renal and mesenteric arteries were incorporated, which was an average of about four vessels per patient. Technical success was achieved in 92% with no mortality, aneurysm rupture, conversion to open repair, dialysis, or spinal cord injury. Four patients, as shown in this table, had major adverse events, primarily due to procedural blood loss of greater than 1,000 milliliters of blood, and one patient had a type 1B endo leak at the distal renal branch, which was successfully treated. CT angiograms at 30 days showed patent target vessels and no type 1 or type 3 endo leaks. The authors concluded that TAMBI for treatment of selected pararenal and extent 4 thoracobdominal aneurysms has a tied technical success, no mortality, and low morbidity, and it should be further investigated in larger patient populations. The third paper by Neil, Scully, and co-authors from the Vascular Quality Improvement Project, or VQI, is entitled Validation of a Preoperative Prediction Model for mortality within one year after endovascular aortic aneurysm repair of intact aneurysms. 
The authors reported on the development of a preoperative prediction model for one-year mortality after EVAR for AAAs. Using the SVS VQI database, they developed the model using 17,836 cases, and then they validated their model using an additional 2,500 cases. 31 preoperative candidate predictors were identified and then reduced to six, which were the best predictors. After elective and non-elective symptomatic intact EVAR, one-year mortality was 5.5% and 11.4% as significant predictors of one-year one mortality, as seen in this visual abstract, and included chronic pulmonary obstructive disease, age, preoperative renal insufficiency, ejection fraction of less than 50%, preoperative beta blocker exposure, larger aneurysm diameter, and lower admission hemoglobin. Preoperative statin use was found to be protective. Approximately 28% of patients had more than four risk factors, as shown in this figure, with a predicted one-year post-EVAR mortality risk of 22%, despite 33% of these patients having aortic aneurysm diameters that are below the recommended treatment guideline minimum thresholds. The authors concluded that this validated preoperative prediction model for one-year mortality identifies patients less likely to benefit from EVAR. The final paper highlighted this, this month is the state of complex endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repairs in the Vascular Quality Initiative by O'Donnell, Shemmerhorn, and colleagues using the VQI database. They studied all endovascular repairs of complex abdominal aortic aneurysms from 2014 to 18, including commercially available fenestrated, chimney or snorkel, and physician-modified devices. And all of these patients were outside of clinical trials or IDEs. Surgeons in 81 centers performed 1,396 complex endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repairs, with 94% elective, 4.5% for symptomatic aneurysms, and 1.8% for rupture. Fenestrated grafts were performed in 63%, physician-modified grafts in 18%, and chimney or snorkel in 19%, as shown in this table. 3,214 visceral vessels were revascularized, with 9% involving one vessel, 38% involving two vessels, 44% involving three vessels, and 9% involving four vessels. Physician-modified grafts involved the most arteries, with an average of 3.3, and treated the more extensive aneurysms. Chimney or snorkel cases employed more arm or neck access, had longer procedural times, and used more contrast. Rates of perioperative death were similar between the three different treatment procedures, but chimney or snorkel was associated with higher rates of major adverse events, including stroke and myocardial infarction. The overall survival following elective repair was 91% at one year and 88% at three years, with no difference between repair types. We hope you enjoy these four highlighted papers and the other excellent papers in this month's Journal of Vascular Surgery, and thank you for your attention.